read a prepared statement and then I'll be happy to take your questions. For some time, the issue of updating and revising our city charter has been a topic of discussion and sometimes a topic of dissension. There is no question that our charter needs to be revised. However, there has been much talk about the most effective and efficient way of proposing changes to the legislature and who should be involved in making those proposals. During the January City Council meeting, the City Council had the opportunity to pass a resolution that would have provided long overdue updates to our charter. The resolution also addressed the five major provisions identified by the legislature that needed further consideration, together with the single issue of the boards and commission conflict of interest provision. Although the resolution passed, it did not receive the two-third majority approval that is necessary for ultimate council approval following passage by the General Assembly. After this vote, I then proposed sending a charter revision that would address only the single boards and commission conflict of interest provision. And it received the exact same number of votes by the exact same members of the council, eight yes and five no. As I stated during the council meeting and have reemphasized to the citizens of Clarksville, this issue is too important to wait any longer. While the city is moving ahead with work on these boards and commissions, Clarksville is missing the opportunity to have the benefit and service of qualified, interested, and talented board members. I have heard some people, even council members, suggest that there are plenty of Clarksville citizens who would be willing to serve on these boards. I agree wholeheartedly and cannot thank them enough for their desire to serve. But there are some positions that require specialized knowledge, education, or training for appointment. These positions that we're talking about are required by law to be filled by architects, attorneys, engineers, design professionals, and accountants, for example. We need these people on our boards and commissions for two primary reasons. First, the law requires it. Second, we need their expertise and experience for the boards and commissions to operate as they were intended to. Because of the current conflict between the single charter provision and the ethics code adopted by the city council, citizens who meet these specific requirements but who have indirect business relationships with the city that pose no real conflict cannot currently fill these positions. This situation is not good for our city. There is no reasonable basis to delay action on this issue. I know that there are Clarksvillians who are concerned about this issue because I hear from them every day. The business community is also concerned because it affects many business owners directly. I have heard from many business owners who ask me, why can't we resolve this quickly? Quite frankly, I can't answer that question because I've been ready, willing, and able to submit this single issue revision to the legislature for weeks. I'm going to resubmit the single issue to the city council for another vote. And I encourage all of you who have asked why this hasn't been resolved to contact your city council member and let them know that it is time to stop playing political games and do what's best for Clarksville. It's time to get these boards and commissions back on track for everyone's benefit. I'm also immediately appointing a charter revision commission. The commission will be made up of the city council members and 12 citizens, and they will join me in a review of the work produced by the previous charter commission and the resolution I submitted to the city council. I have been consistent in my view that the people should have a voice in any changes made to the charter, and I believe that there are efficient and less expensive ways to do this other than some suggestions I've heard thrown around. The Charter is Clarksville's Constitution. It is the framework for our government. It charts a course for our priorities and provides a leadership roadmap for future generations. As I have said before, revising our Charter is not and should not be easy. It's not something that every newly elected City Council should have to or want to undertake. I am certain that resolving the boards and commissions issue during this legislative session and working through the Charter Revision Commission is the responsible and most efficient way to proceed on this vitally important subject. Thank you. I'll now 
I'll take any questions that you may have. Mayor, will this be brought up then, as you mentioned, at the, uh, the next city council uh, executive session as well as uh, regular session? It will. Session? I have asked uh, the city clerk to place this on the executive session agenda. So Thursday night, we will take up this issue. What sort of time frame are you looking at having this to the state for consideration? Well, if it passes at the next city council meeting, which is the following Thursday, since it's a resolution, it only requires one vote. So we'll be able to send it immediately to the legislature once it passes by the two-thirds. Now remember, it is not required to pass by two-thirds to send it to the legislature. However, the legislature has asked that that occur because when it comes back after the legislature passes it, it is required to have a two-thirds majority vote. Mayor, um, I know that the idea of a home rule charter has been thrown around. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I understand the home rule uh, process. I have done some significant research myself on that issue. While that is a way that you can amend your charter, that is only one of various ways to amend the charter. Quite frankly, I think it is extremely complex. It is very time consuming and is something that I think would cause a great delay in actually getting the charter revisions that we need. Well, thank you all very much for coming.